Well, hello there. Welcome to our little shop. This is an interesting little story. I have on the bench a PV6505 Plus. The current owner brought it in last weekend with the complaint that it wouldn't power up. He had purchased it from the previous owner for this problem. The previous owner was using it. Uh, apparently there was a problem. Couldn't get it to power on. He went through the trouble to replace all the tubes, thinking it would solve his problem. Still would not power up so he passed it on to someone else so the new owner brings it in mentioned it to me first thing I did is pull the fuse to see if the fuse was good which it was he proceeds to tell me that uh, the other owner had replaced all the tubes in it so we're talking four 6L6's six, six preamp tubes hoping it would solve the problem which it did not so I pulled the fuse, checked the fuse, fuse is good. Then I put the fuse back in and it wouldn't latch in the fuse holder. So I get it on the bench today, open it up, and uh, sure enough, fuse holder doesn't connect. So what we're going to do is change this fuse holder. We're going to, we're going to be using a uh, more sturdy low profile screw on cap fuse holder and keep in mind that uh, during this video it's going to be very short and sweet but the point of the matter is I am not chastising their former owner it's just another example though of people buying tubes to put in an amplifier that they did not need he spent a lot of money on tubes because of a bad fuse holder. So I'll be back in a few. Well, that took just a few minutes. We have our new fuse holder in. A couple things here I want to point out to you. One, here's something I always do, and I'm sure someone will point out the errors in my ways. But anyway, I have reasons for it. If you notice, the black AC lead is going to the back side of the fuse holder instead of the tip, as it usually does. My reason for that is, if you would take the cap off and the fuse would happen to be stuck in the fuse holder, your AC is on the tip, which goes right to here. <laughs> And if you have forgotten to unplug the amplifier, it's going to light you up. Don't ask how I know that. <laughs> I will tell you that bit of information was discovered probably about 40 years ago. So anyway, I always wire these backwards. Like I say, I'm sure somebody will have a reason for not doing that. But that is my reason. Because if you go get hold of this, pull it out. It'll nail you. That's only 110, 127, but still it hurts. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to carry on here. I now have power supply, but he had also mentioned the pots and stuff were dirty, and he wondered if I could clean those. So, since the tubes have been changed, we're going to check the bias and a few things here, and the amps are really cruddy on the other side here from being stored for a while but uh, we're gonna get him cleaned up so there we go about an hour and a half later all the lights are on and there are people home so the amp works everything works as it's meant to be but uh, I've never seen a case yet where a tube failure unless it takes out a fuse will keep an AC voltage from appearing on your amp <laughs> so 
tip guys if your amp doesn't work at all don't buy a set of tubes like I say I'm not uh, busting this guy's chops I just see it in here a lot people just waste money it's like um, putting a new engine in your car because it doesn't turn over without checking the starter first so anyway just a heads up and say I see a lot of people buying full sets of tubes for stuff they don't need in fact sometimes it even creates other problems uh, as of such with this amplifier now to think about it when he changed these tubes he didn't know to bias it and he was drawing about 50 mils per tube on his 6L6's and these amps according to PV quote Eddie likes to have them run cold as hell so when I talked to the techs years ago about the 5150's and these amps when they first come out they are meant to run a little bit colder than usual so anyway till next time play nice I'll see you later